the Arkansas Pine Bluff, preseason West number five. They have a major money game against Arkansas. I wonder mm-hmm. what the spread on that game. Minus 35. Uh, God, it's so crazy. <laughs> Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with us today for this special HBCU preview of the 2024-2025 college football season, Will Cotton. Will, how are you? You didn't go to HBCU. I did, but you didn't. How are you, sir? Oh, no, I did. I went to Howard for grad school. Yes, you did. You are correct. Yes. Uh, coach was proud of the master's degree. So, all right, no more ribbon. Uh, and uh, shout out to both Lincoln University, where I passed through, but that's not Lincoln's fault, and Bowie State University. Uh, so on today's show, in segment one, we're going to cover the SWAC. In segment two, we're going to cover the MEAC. And in segment three, we're going to cover the other HBCUs, as well as the stories of the year and postseason predictions. But before we begin, fans, remember, The OCP college football preview shows are designed with the casual fan uh, to get you excited because we also talk about things strictly for entertainment purposes only. So let's start out with the Southwestern Athletic Conference East schedule, Alabama State. Well, Alabama State is preseason East number one because the SWAC does the East and SWAC does the West. They have no major money game. Um. Demetrius Davis is the player to watch. He is a dual threat quarterback. Uh, Alabama State should be the team to watch. And if you recall their coach, Eddie Robinson Jr., no relation to the to the late great Eddie Robinson, he was the one a few years ago when Dion was there that said, "You a swack, baby. You a swack. I'm swack." Um, <laughs> so Alabama uh, State. This is probably the team that will represent, but we'll find out a little bit later. You got FAMU. That's Florida A and M. Uh, they're yep. preseason East number two. They have a major money game will against Miami September seventh. Um, anything about FAMU? Because I'm sure you went to a party or two in your day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I well, I think Miami shouldn't be sleeping on them. Because, you know, those are the guys that they grew up with, you know, guys that went to the high school with the middle school and, and you know, peewee football. So don't think they're just going to, you know, they're going to like walk over y'all. So I think FAMU is going to give them a, a, a nice little fight. But at the end of the day, I think Miami's going to be too much for them. But it'd be good exposure for the FAMU team and know what they got to do, where they want to be and what they want, you know, as they move forward in their program. All right. Jackson State. Is preseason East number three. Of course, uh, a few years ago, Deion Sanders had all types of media down at Jackson State. They don't have a money game this year. They did go seven and four last year. They were very active in the transfer portal. They brought in 19 new faces. A lot to be excited about. Uh, they, they're they're going to probably more likely to not be in the mix. So good luck to Jackson yeah. State. Alabama A&M, preseason East number four, major money game against Auburn. Uh, I do not think they're going to beat Auburn. Uh, but, Will, they've got nearly 30 new incoming recruits, a revamped defensive coaching staff, 30 incoming recruits. What do you think about adding? 30 new players to your football team, Will. No consistency. I know uh, and it's hard to believe that half of those guys are going to be there the year, the next the year after that. So uh, take what you got, you know, get the talent you can, try and develop what you – it's hard to develop, you know, especially when you get all these kinds of guys, especially when, you know, you're not bringing them in as, 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 as freshmen. You know, these guys you get are juniors, so a lot of their – their habits are already, you know, strong. So it's hard to change stuff on that for guys like that. So it'll be it'll be difficult. But, you know, if you're getting turnover like that, I mean, you can't have any consistency. So you can't really have a, a real program like that. So. All right. We're going to go to Daytona. Bethune Cookman, preseason East number five. They're, they've got two money games. They're playing uh, University of South Florida. And they're playing uh, Western Michigan. Shout out to Robert Abney with our directional schools in the MAC. 
Not much to uh, expect, though, uh, with the Thune Cookman. So we're going to go to Mississippi Valley State. They're preseason East number six. They've got no major money games. Uh, they they're under uh, their second year coach Kendrick Wade. It's just hard to recruit in Mississippi Valley oh, State. Man. It's challenging down in the Delta. So uh, with that, we'll go to the SWAC West, Alcorn State. Uh, home of uh, Air Steve McNair, the late great uh, HBCU legend. They are preseason West number one. They have a major game against UAB, University of Alabama, Birmingham, and they play Vanderbilt, uh, a little SEC action. Uh, they're going to be featured on a variety of ESPN pluses and <laughs> deltas, uh, so you'll see them a little bit. Uh, any any thoughts about Alcorn State? Because they do have a very rich history. Uh, I hope they're getting a nice check for playing Vanderbilt. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the, the, the history is awesome. You know, I don't know if they've kept up to that. Uh, but, you know, uh, it would be good to have the exposure playing against, like, Alabama, uh, Alabama Birmingham, and uh, Vanderbilt. So, do what you got to do. Show out, man. Because, uh, I mean, I'm not. they could beat Vanderbilt. <laughs> they can't be in there. Okay. All right. Prairie View A and M preseason West number two. No major money games. Uh, they've got a lot of transfers. They brought in a. Uh, I, I guess it would be pow. Nah, AAC is not power or anything. They brought in former Houston quarterback Lucas uh, Coley to help manage the loss of their quarterback from last year. Good luck to Prairie View A and M. Grambling State, shout out to Oshawa, uh, former soccer player at Grambling. Uh, they're preseason West number three. They have a major money game against Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns. They have the preseason offensive player of the year and quarterback Miles Crawley. Uh, they're going to usher in the Mickey Joseph era. Uh, good luck to them. Uh, many of their uh, players uh, come from the portal. They brought in 17 FBS transfers. Uh, nice. So we'll we'll see if that makes a difference. It's really <laughs> challenging to build in this new era. So your mm -hmm. structures have to be in place. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as the show and as the year goes on, as we watch all of these mishmash teams try to come together. Southern is preseason uh, number four, no major money games. They have the preseason defensive player of the year. And I believe it's Kelby Givens. Uh, they come into the season looking to make that next step. They went six and five last year. Uh, again, good luck because their starting quarterback from last year, he transferred to Missouri. And we'll talk about Missouri later on this summer when we preview the SEC. Texas Southern is preseason West number six. They've got a major money game against Rice. I can't believe Rice is the money game, but Rice yeah, has to bring in somebody to win too. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, and finally, Arkansas Pine Bluff, preseason West number five. They have a major money game against Arkansas. I wonder mm -hmm. what the spread on that game. Minus 35. Man. Uh, God, it's so crazy. <laughs> All right. As we close segment one, the SWAC football championship game is Saturday, December 7th. Uh, as we talk about the MEAC in segment two, the SWAC has enough for two divisions, and let's just say the MEAC doesn't. So when we get back, we're going to preview each and every one of the MEAC teams, including the Howard Bison. We'll be right back on the Eye Coaches Podcast. Why should student athletes use the CKA Save Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision-making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the CKA Save Projects close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student athletes to increase success as we work to help student athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. 
For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two. Let's talk about the Mideast Athletic Conference, the MEAC. Uh, the MEAC has like six teams, so uh, <laughs> a lot of changes. And we'll talk about some of the schools who left the MEAC in, in segment three. But North Carolina Central is preseason number one. They have a major money game against UNC. Um, the Eagles place four players in the preseason first team uh, all conference. They've got a good offensive lineman. They got good defensive linemen. Uh, they should be truly in the mix, and they were preseason number one on purpose. They're very good. Howard, the Bison. Shout out to Akil, former coach yeah. of the uh, uh, former member of the coaching staff. Howard is preseason number two. They've got a money game against Rutgers. Um, mm-hmm. Big Ten, Big Ten money. They have the preseason offensive player of the year and running back Jared Hunter. They're going to run him like Larry Brown and the and the Redskins from the <laughs> mid seventies. Uh, they led the conference preseason team uh, with six players in the preseason all conference team. Will, have you ever been to Howard to uh, to watch a football game? Have you ever gone to a football game at Howard? Oh, yeah, for sure. My wife, uh, she actually had a townhouse that overlooked the Howard football field. So whenever we wake up early, we'd go take a, take a stroll over there and we'd catch some games, man. So, yeah, it's fun. It's a, you know, but get out of there before it gets too dark, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. So, fans, Morgan State, who I am very high on, is preseason number three. Here's why I'm high on Morgan State. They've got no major money games. Their coach uh, came over from Bowie State, so I had a chance to watch them a lot, and Bowie State did a lot in the CIAA. They finished 4-6 and six last year. They were 3-2 and two in overall conference play, though, uh, and they also started with a win over Richmond last year. Then they had some issues at Morgan. They had some campus things going on, and it was kind of distracting. So it's been very quiet. Also, Point Five and I have gone to Morgan for uh, some football things. So I had a chance to walk to campus, talk to some of the people, and and I really like the direction they're going in. So keep an eye out for Morgan State. South Carolina State, a lot of family members from South Carolina State, preseason number four. They have no major money games. Uh, they led, uh, they, they've got seven all conference picks. Uh, good luck to them because they, they lost legendary coach Buddy Pugh. It was his last mm-hmm. season before his retirement. Um, but again, it's going to be challenging for them to to recover from from all of that pomp and circumstance. Norfolk State, a lot of the family members of the Adams and the Chances uh, have gone to Norfolk State. Uh, shout out to a good friend of ours, Lindsey Robinson, Norfolk State super fan. They're preseason number five. They've got a major money game against East Carolina. East Carolina is trying their best to, to be a big boy. So good luck to them. <laughs> Norfolk Every State, night, right? <laughs> Norfolk State went two and nine last year, and they're not going to be that good this year. So again, uh, go Spartans and wait for basketball season. Finally, Dell State, preseason number six. They've got the best money game out there, Will. They're going yeah. to Hawaii. Okay. It's a long way to go for behind kicking, but I'll go there. Uh, just left Dell State. They did a uh, football camp there. I was underwhelmed. I can't lie. Point five was underwhelmed. Uh, any thoughts about Dell State before we actually delve into the other HBCUs? We'll do it uh, in segment two. Oh, I'm biased, man. I got two great, great friends who uh, won over at Delaware, uh, Delaware State. So my eyes are a little biased, um, you know, to, for them to be one to ten. Uh, it speaks more, you know, it speaks, it speaks more of a school that just doesn't want to get better. I mean, uh, you get talent, you get guys who, you know, have a structure, you know, you're in Delaware. So you have a good hotbed where you can actually get talent, you know, around you. You don't have to go too far. I mean, Philly's up the Philly's up the road, Maryland's down the street. You know, it's just organization, and it's 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 unfortunate to see that they can't build 
from that season that they had in 2007 that they can, you know, carry over that. But I hope yeah. the best for them. But whew, one in 10 are going to be tough. And uh, at least they get a nice trip to Hawaii this year. Yeah. And, and I, I, along those lines, not just with Dale State, but but many of the uh, schools we've talked about, it goes a lot to the investment or lack thereof. Uh, the recipe for success hasn't changed much over the history of, of life. You, you've got to provide yourself some good structures. You got to provide yourself some more uh, accountability measures and you got to help. And when you have a lot of coaching changes and you don't invest in facilities just to have something nice, when you walk on campus, you don't want to say, yo, yeah, well, my high school stadium is better than this. Nice, uh, yeah. <laughs> just, just little yeah. things, huh? not even huge. Can, can, can we sweep up? <laughs> yeah. Why not? As, get- as, go ahead. Will. Okay. And you want to get away from believing that athletics is reason people want to come here. I mean, you have a lot of people who come to these you know, schools and they're like, hey, because I even tell a story. I went to uh, what you call Morehouse one time and I was talking to him and I was like, hey, so, you know, how about how's the football program and da, 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 and how you guys doing this? And this guy person told me he was like, well, we don't care about football too much over here. We don't care about athletics. And that turns me off. And that immediately, and that was the beginning of the tour. I was not listening for the rest of the time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. So no. this, ain't, this, ain't, this ain't a place for me. So they don't have the culture to even bring in the love of, uh, you know, they don't even have the culture to bring in, enable that one of those things. So it's it's it's, mm. it's, it's sad and it's disheartening, but. All right. So, so we're going to, we're going to talk about the other HBCUs and, I really want to get your thoughts, Will, on this change. So Hampton University of North Carolina A&T left the MEAC to go to different conferences. And Hampton's been in a couple of conferences since they left the MEAC. Now they're in the Coastal Athletic Association, which is the former Colonial Athletic Association, uh, CAA. And they're preseason number 12. (laughs) <laughs> they have no major money games, and they also have a running back, Elijah Burris, who they're going to run into the ground. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then North Carolina A&T also went to, to the CAA. Their preseason number 14. They have a major money game against Wake Forest, and they have a uh, you know, player, Karan uh, Prunty, uh, who's a junior cornerback, who hopefully both these guys will get an NFL look. But will. What are your thoughts on HBCUs leaving the historically black college and university conference and and plying their trade elsewhere? Yeah, I think it's kind of, you know, it's kind of messed up. I mean, they had a great thing going with Howard and the HU and who's the real HU. And, you know, that was a great rival, but it's no longer there. Um, Hampton's trying to stand out. Hampton's trying to do something different. You know, I guess they don't feel like they have the support as the rest of the HBCU uh, universities or anybody else, especially like when you're talking about sharing money. Um, I know Hampton is definitely looking at that. They're trying to stand out and take their program in a different direction that a lot of other HBCU teams are. Um, it's, it's interesting what they're going to do. I mean, uh, are you going to go to the CAA and get punished for, for five years? <laughs> There's like 16 teams in, in there yeah. in, in the lower yeah. so threshold. I, I, it, it, I, I just wonder why they would make that decision, you know, because every now and again, Hampton's good, and they win the MIAC, and they actually, you know, do well. So, so for them to leave, uh, it's kind of disheartening as well. But, you know, uh, everyone has their own path, but – I'm not really sure if that path is going to like prove success for them. So we'll see, but good luck to them. And good luck to uh, North Carolina A&T because my niece, Miss River, uh, will be attending there as a freshman in the fall. Uh, Finally, Big South OVC, Tennessee State head coach, Eddie George, by the way, their preseason number four in their conference. They have a major game against North Dakota State. Got to pay attention to that one because North Dakota State opens up with Colorado and then they play Tennessee State. So this is a good opportunity for them. Uh, Tennessee State has the opportunity uh, to be one of the uh, FCS playoff teams. So that will be curious to see if Eddie George can get talent in to, uh, you know, make some noise with that. But in terms of finding your own way in your own conference, 
you know, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. And if the MEAC and the SWAC are not going to invest and there's going to be another opportunity to expand your brand, well, sometimes you got to leave home, I'm guessing. But with that, in segment three, we're going to talk about postseason. We're going to talk about the HBCU top five HBCU stories of the year. We're going to have some fun with that. We'll be right back on the Odd Coaches Podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. <laughs> Welcome back to the Yacht Coaches Podcast in segment three. After reviewing a lot of information, the media guides, and so forth, we've got our own HBCU top five. Number one, Alabama State. Number two, FAMU. Number three, Tennessee State. Number four, North Carolina Central. And number five, Howard. Next three is Alcorn State, Morgan State, and Jackson State. And throughout the, the uh, season, Every week, we'll mention an HBCU team or two uh, during our regular run of college football uh, information. Uh, in terms of stories of the year, Will, can HBCU stay on the national radar? We're a few years removed from Dion. Can any HBCU make us care? Because as much as you can say about Dion and this and that, we watched. <laughs> say what you want, but spell my name right. What do you think? Can HBCU stay on the national radar? No, it's going to be hard, man. It's going to be hard. I mean, when you don't play on TV every day or every week, people aren't going to remember you. And, you know, we have a lot of our people who love, who went to HBCUs, who, you know, stay up, stay abreast with what's going on. And they'll say, hey, are you watching Grambling? Are you playing Alcorn State? Hey, did you watch Howard beat so-and-so? And more of it's like a, uh, you know, like a, like a, hear from here. Like, you know, you don't hear it like on the news. You hear from like people and talk to them. Um, I think that whole thing with Dion, man, it's unfortunate, man, because the dudes, uh, I mean, he, 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 he has energy. He has energy. He had great energy. Whether you liked him or you disliked him, you were talking about Jackson State. You were talking about HBCU. Controversy you know, creates time. cash. Wrestling exactly. 101. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He would say stuff. Even things would happen. I mean, it, it, they would go to games and then, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they would like get have their stuff stolen from them in the they locker room. They would stay after halftime because after yeah. halftime in the band place, most people are leaving. But yes, they did have some things stolen. And yeah, it, <sighs> you know, but it, it was just it's just man, it's just like a great market man, like a great commercial or, or, or a car salesman. This guy brings you in. Come on. I got that, man. Come on. Check out. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And they don't have a guy like that, you know, and with all this money going around in 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 college money and college football, you're going to have to put some money out. And, and that's exactly what happened. Dion wants some more money because he knew what he had to do to keep some players or make some facilities to improve them. They said, "Nah, we're not looking at that. We're 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 a, you know institution that looks towards like education. We're not a football school. And that's what they got. And, you know, I don't know if they're going to find another guy with that kind of like energy and aura to people, unless you bring like a young, you know, this, yeah. this, you because know, they did guy, try but... a couple of schools tried to bring in an ex NFL guy 
And oh, yeah. What people, uh, Ed, Ed Reed. <laughs> what people <laughs> don't understand this? about Dion is <laughs> he did youth sports. He has coached. He's done travel ball. Yeah. He's done all of these things. So he was used to this where other guys are like, oh, I could do this too. And I'm like, it's not no. that easy. It's, it's hard coaching, man. It's no. hard Ed Reed, organizing. I don't know what he's doing. He's going talking about get on doing a video and 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 recording and talking about this is terrible this is trash this is i'm like dude like you just got here <laughs> you know it's, it's not hard. like you've been here five years and then you get to be like oh man well i've been five years and this is this is not good like you just got on campus and you going around talking about this is terrible this is awful yeah. like, you took the job bro did you walk around the campus did you meet people? <laughs> All right. And the second big story for me is, will the NFL come calling? The OCP has covered the NFL and college in great detail for the last three years, going on four years, and not a lot of calls in April from the HBCUs. Zero HBCU football players were selected in the 2024 NFL draft. Will that change? Will, what do you think, sir? I mean, I think there was not one drafted last year. I believe uh, I had a buddy who you know keeps track of that kind of that kind of metrics. Uh, it's kind of it's, it's disheartening, man. You know, because those guys can play ball. You know, those guys are good. They just need a chance. You know, some guys, you know, they don't have the 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 the, the games on three thirty. You know, that everyone sees on CBS, and they don't have the games on you know Saturday night at ESPN. And you know, we're going to Death Valley and all this stuff. They don't yeah. get that commercial stuff but they guys can ball man they got some really good players and i hope that the nfl will look into them especially if they're looking into expand their rosters i mean the best place you're going to do is you're going to say man i can find some a, a gem or a diamond in the rough you know something like that but it was just very disheartening and i hope i hope it changes and i hope we can really you know uh, show people that hbcu they they have some good ballers and they can yeah. they can play ball and, and exciting so I hope that changes, but we'll see what happens this year. But and they've tried everything. I mean, they've had guys who who are who are five stars, who are blue bloods, who come over here, and nobody watches. You know, um, it's just it's just disheartening. So I hope they can change. I hope they need something. They need to either I don't have the recipe, but maybe the CKA does. So look at us. Yeah, yes. we'll, we'll have a contract ready, and we could definitely uh, <laughs> improve for sure. All right, the celebration bowl is December fourteenth. Uh, high noon at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Hotlanta, Georgia. It will be on a a ABC. Uh, I'm predicting that Alabama State will represent the SWAC and Morgan State will represent the MEAC. Uh, and I'm also rooting for Tennessee State to make the FCS playoffs. Uh, again, really rooting for HBCUs. And as Will said, if you do want some consultation help, CKA Save Project is very happy to assist. So on behalf of Team Captain for Life, Will Cotton, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the iCoaches podcast, this preview of HBCUs, and we will see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. The Odd Coaches Podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA Save Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.